Hello everyone! Welcome back to Math Room by Teacher Sean. In this video, we are going to have a lesson in basic calculus and the topic is all about evaluating limits algebraically using substitution, factoring, and conjugate. Here is the learning objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to apply substitution, factoring, and conjugate in evaluating the limit of algebraic functions like polynomial, rational, and radical. In the previous video, we have learned to evaluate the limit of a function using the limit theorems. Aside from that, we may actually opt to use algebraic methods. We have direct substitution, factoring, and conjugate to evaluate the limit of a function. Mean to say, we may not religiously follow the limit theorems. So let's begin with the first method, direct substitution. In direct substitution, we just simply plug in the value of x being approached to the given function and solve for its value. Let's begin with the first example. Find the limit of 5x minus 4 as x approaches negative 2. Applying direct substitution, x here will be replaced with negative 2, so this is equal to 5 times negative 2 minus 4 equals 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 minus 4 and this gives us negative 14. So this is the limit of 5x minus 4 as x approaches negative 2. Second example, find the limit of x squared plus 5x plus 1 as x approaches 3. So again, in direct substitution, we'll just simply plug in the value of x being approached to every x in the given function. So we have here 3 squared plus 5 times 3 plus 1. The square of 3 is 9 plus the product is 15 plus 1. This gives us 25. So the limit of x squared plus 5x plus 1 as x approaches 3 is 25. Third example, Evaluate the limit of the square root of 3x minus 10 as x approaches 6. Using direct substitution, the x in the function will become 6. So we have square root of 3 times 6 minus 10. Multiply 3 and 6, it is 18 minus 10. 18 minus 10 gives us 8. To simplify square root of 8, we will get factors of 8 which are 4 and 2, so we have 4 times 2. Get the square root of each, so square root of 4 gives us 2. Square root of 2 we don't have, so it will retain inside the radical sign. So the limit of the square root of 3x minus 10 as x approaches 6 is equal to 2 is square root of 2. Fourth example. Evaluate the limit of x squared minus 1 over 2x plus 3 as x approaches 2. We'll be applying the same procedure. Let x be equal to 2. So we now have 2 squared minus 1 over 2 times 2 plus 3. This gives us 2 squared is 4 minus 1 over 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3. Simplify, this becomes 4 minus 1 is 3 over 4 plus 3 is 7. So the limit of x squared minus 1 over 2x plus 3 as x approaches 2 is equal to 3 over 7. This time, let us consider this problem. Evaluate the limit of x squared minus 49 over x minus 7 as x approaches 7. If we're going to apply direct substitution, the numerator will become 7 squared minus 49 and the denominator will become 7 minus 7. The numerator becomes 49 minus 49 over 7 minus 7 is 0. So this is equal to 0 over 0. As we can see, we cannot have 0 over 0. Therefore, for this given problem, we cannot use direct substitution. Try to observe the given function. As we can see, there is a common factor between the numerator and denominator. Hence, 
To find the limit of this function, we can apply factory, and that is the second method in evaluating limits algebraically. Factory. If direct substitution cannot be applied and if the function is factorable, then use factory. Afterwards, proceed to substitution, then solve. First problem, find the limit of x squared minus 49 over x minus 7 as x approaches 7. The numerator is factorable and it is equal to x plus 7 times x minus 7. Applying the square of binomials over x minus 7. Next thing to do is to cancel the common factor and that is x minus 7. So we only have x plus 7. The next thing to be done is to find the limit of this using direct substitution. So we replace x with 7. So we have 7 plus 7. This gives us 14. So the limit of the given function as x approaches 7 is equal to 14. Second example, find the limit of x squared minus 9 over 2x minus 6 as x approaches 3. This time, we also need to apply factoring because if we're going to plug in 3 in the denominator, it will become 0 and it's not allowed. So to get the factors for the numerator, apply the square of binomial. So we have x plus 3 times x minus 3. Over, for the denominator, apply the common monomial factory. And the common factor on these two terms is 2. So factor it out. So we have x minus 3. Next is to cancel the common factor. So we remove x minus 3 on both numerator and denominator. So we only have x plus 3 over 2. Next is to evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 on this function. So we substitute 3 to x. So we have 3 plus 3 over 2. This becomes 6 over 2 and this is equal to 3. So the limit of this function as x approaches 3 is equal to 3. Third example. Find the limit of x squared plus 4x minus 12 over x squared minus 2x as x approaches 2. Again, here we have to apply factoring since if we're going to plug in 2 to every x in the denominator, it will result to 0. So we need to apply factoring for the numerator, factoring quadratic trinomial, so this becomes x plus 6 times x minus 2 over Denominator, common monomial factoring, factor out x times x minus 2. Cancel the common factor, we have x minus 2, so we only have x plus 6 over x. Evaluate the limit for this function using direct substitution, so make x be equal to 2, so we have 2 plus 6 over 2. Simplify, we have 8 over 2. And this is equal to 4. So the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. This time, let us consider this given problem. Evaluate the limit of square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. If we're going to use direct substitution for the denominator, limit of x approaches 4 of x minus 4 it will result to 4 minus 4 and it is equal to 0, which is not allowed. And if we're going to try to apply factoring, it is also not allowed because there is nothing to be factored in this given function. So what can we do to find the limit of this? We can apply the third method, which is conjugate. If direct substitution and factoring cannot be applied, and if the given has a radical, then you may use conjugate to rationalize the given function. So what do we mean by rationalization? When we say rationalization, it is a process of getting rid of the radical symbol by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the expression with radical. So let us apply conjugate to our first example. Let us evaluate the limit of square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 
as x approaches 4. If we're going to apply the concept of conjugate, we need to multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the expression with radical, and that is the numerator. So times the conjugate of this Next is to get the product of the numerator using sum and difference of two terms. So square root of x times square root of x is only x. Negative 2 times positive 2 is minus 4. Over. For the denominator, we are not going to multiply this 2. We'll just simply copy x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2. Next is to cancel out the common factor, and that is x minus 4. So in the numerator, we have 1 over the square root of x plus 2. This time, we can now apply direct substitution. 
So replace x with 4. So we have 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2. And this gives us 1 over 2 plus 2. And this is equal to 1 4. So we can now conclude that the limit of square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4 is equal to 1 4. Second example, evaluate the limit of square root of x plus 5 minus 2 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. So again, we have to use conjugate. So we get the conjugate of the expression with a radical, so that is the numerator. So the conjugate of this, we have same terms, we just simply change the sign. So the conjugate contains addition, so we have square root of x plus 5 plus 2 over square root of x plus 5 plus 2. To get the product, we apply the sum and difference. So we have the square root of x plus 5 times square root of x plus 5. This gives us x plus 5. Negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. Over, for the denominator, we will just simply copy the terms. So we have x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 5 plus 2. Simplify further. For the numerator, we have x plus 1 over x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 5 plus 2. Cancel the common factor. We have x plus 1. So for the numerator, we only have 1 over the square root of x plus 5 plus 2. Evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 1. So we have 1 over the square root of negative 1 plus 5 plus 2. 1 over the square root of negative 1 plus 5 is 4, and square root of 4 is 2 plus 2 gives us 4. So 1 fourth is the limit of this function as x approaches negative 1. After presenting to you the three algebraic methods, this time, check your own understanding. Compute for the following limits. You may pause the video to answer the following items. Let us now check your work. First, the answer is negative 2. Second, the answer is negative 8. Third, the answer is 1 half. Fourth, the limit is 3 halves. And fifth, the limit is 1 eighth. Did you get all of these answers correctly? If yes, great job! So what do you need to remember? Evaluating limits can easily be done using the algebraic methods, substitution, factoring, and conjugate. Just learn when to use each method. If in case all of this will not work, then the limit does not exist. This is the end of our discussion about evaluating limits algebraically using direct substitution, factoring, and conjugate. I hope you have learned something from this video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to be updated. Bye everyone! See you on our next video.